I, I, you, you dwell on it more when you're alone and you're locked down in your house and you can't go outside. Dude, the skate parks were closed. They're just open for outdoors. The week I couldn't even go to the skate park. I was losing it. Then I was thinking about everybody else in a wheelchair. The little kids with uh, spina biff, the veterans with PTSD. I was like, this is this this shit got it got worse. It went from 22 to 30. And then I was there like I I was by myself and you know we all have our problems. You know we all think about stupidity. And then I just started trying to focus on what what can be done. To, get this slowed down and stopped. Then it started balancing out. It finally started opening up. We started being able to talk to people more and do more and everybody started. We are back with my buddy and teammate from uh, Team Navy, Rico Reyes. Rico, say hello. How you guys doing? So, how has uh, how's everything been? Thus far, with uh, COVID being on the havoc you lose, quote, and or unquote, um, it's been a little difficult, honestly, with, with the way things have been moving with, the, with society and the economy in general. Ugh, it makes it difficult trying to start a business and having so many... Dude, I'll, I'll, I'll bring and I'll show you some of the stuff that I'm literally on a chair right now. Um, it's a it's a one off, of course, but it's, it's how I'm going to start. I plan. But the goal you when you see this chair, have you seen the chief? The the one that I'm in daily currently? No. I'm usually online with I, I, I go, I'll go online with that one. Give me a second. If you want to see it, let me know. I have the kids bring it. Yeah, but- I'm working on this one right here. Look, this is the one I'm, I have literally in the garage as we speak about to be mocked up is that one. I won't let you glare at that for too long, but you guys, I'll post more. I, I, I want to make it better for us, man. That's the truth. For, for, for most anybody handicapped in general, they usually have something where they don't feel very normal or they're always that that uh that third wheel you know what i mean i don't want it to be like that anymore i want people i want i want to go somewhere and be like oh wow where'd you get that why is it like that that's what those are the reactions i get when i go places and they see the chair now and they're like they're freaking out because it's never been done like that so let's jump back a little bit. And you were in the Navy for how long? Oh, four or five years. I don't remember exact dates. TBI. So let's go back to what got you in the Navy to begin with. Man, the Navy. I was, I was in Miami at the time, and I was just you know going to school and whatnot. And, you know, we were all at, at war at the time with Afghanistan and whatnot and, who, and and our allies and doing things. And I would just be at school or be at work sometimes and be like, why is it like this? Like, they're like, why, why is the world like this? And I was like, what, if it's like this and I can't agree, what what could I do if I have something to say? What could I do about it? Or how could I contribute back because it's necessary? You got to remember, dude, the, the military holds it down. The police, the fire department hold it down. It, it, it's something that a, a, a few choose to do that the majority just don't. And it's where I understand the aspect of the necessity for the military. We need defenders. We need defense. For us to be safe, somebody has to be willing to step out, sign their name on that dotted line. And at the time, I just, I just, I just didn't agree with anything overall. And at the time in Miami, Florida, my family was chaotic. 
And I was like, you know what? I'm done with all this. If, if, if I don't agree, let's, let's figure out how to change it. So I, I went to the Navy. So were you the first in your uh, immediate family to go into the military? Um, for my comprehension, no. For my comprehension, a <laughs> grandfather that I had never met um, on my mother's side, um, he died when my mother was a child, um, was in the Army. Oh, he, okay. did a, he did a contract uh, and then he was done. I, I think he did Vietnam during that time. I don't remember. I don't have any exact dates, but that's what I was told. I saw a picture of him in uniform, and that's about as close as, as deep as it got. Right on. So leaving Miami, did you know what you wanted to do in the Navy, or did you just take, like, open contract? When I went to the Navy, I knew I wanted to go to war, but I, I knew that I, 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 I knew that some people were there for fighting. But I didn't, I didn't agree with every aspect of fighting because I did martial arts. I taught martial arts when I was at, at school at the University of Florida. Um, I brain farted. <laughs> Go back, dude. No, I was just asking, did you, um, did you know the job you wanted to do when you left? No, dude. No, no. I, I went in there wanting to know what was needed. I, I, I looked at other jobs. I looked at HM. I looked at guys like that because I was more medical focused, but then I still wanted to be able to contribute to war in the way that I thought I could logically that was best suitable to the military for my brain to work its, at its highest function, quote, and or unquote. So I did missiles. I did FC. And they explained it to me. And I was like, and, like, and they explain defense and you defend this and you take care of everybody here and everybody on the shore, you make sure they're safe and such and such. And I was like, that sounds gnarly. So the fighter pilots, you're their backup too. I'm like, they told me, they explained all this to me and I'm like, and then they showed me the video and I'm like, oh, wow. <laughs> and I saw Sea Whiz and I saw, what we call them R2D2. I saw SM2s and I saw Tomahawks and I'm like, like oh. How does this function? They started explaining. I'm like, oh, wow. Yes, please. Oh, man. So how was, uh, when did you leave for boot camp? Do you remember roughly what time of year? A year. I'm trying to remember dates. I mean, was it like a winter, summer? It was spring. It was spring. I I like spring was gnarly, dude, because we could still march and. I learned about people getting beat and or unquote. It was pretty gnarly. <laughs> no, the, the reason why I was asking is because I know you're from um, Miami. So yeah. going to Great Lakes in the middle of winter would have been an interesting th- trip for you. Yeah. Okay. I, I don't tell a lot of people this. I was born in Chicago. Oh, okay. I went to Florida when I was like 12. Chicago is an aspect that I don't even try to remember because I have a bunch of negative memories especially with the winters there winters in chicago are forget it dude you can wear 50 (laughs) layers of clothing and you're still frozen when i moved back there with my wife my wife was originally from california and she went to miami i met her there but when she got a taste of 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 the weather there she freaked like i don't know what this is (laughs) that that bad huh very much so so you get to boot camp how much of a culture shock was it for you Say again? How much of a culture shock was it for you? What do you mean culture shock? Like, did you have a hard time dealing with the orders and the commands and dealing with people? Yeah, it, it, it was, it was different. It was, I was, a, I went in after, I went in when a little older. So I understood like job structure and I understood, you know, the boss and whatnot. But when I went in, it was, It was different. You know, a lot of people talk about political rights and such and such, but when you're in boot camp, that's all very different. You need to shut your hole. You need to understand (laughs) you're there to be educated and Uh, made a sailor. And it it was a shock because it was like, I was there standing at attention off this bus, pitch black outside. I'm like, 
I'm like, I thought the movies were fake when the people were in the dark. No, no, we were in the dark out there. And they said, once you get on the bus, there's no coming back. You're on the bus, it's sealed. I'm like, I'm on. But it was, it was boot camp, forget it. A lot of the guys that you saw, like people freaking out, like having nervous breakdowns oh, yeah. because yeah, they couldn't be, they weren't used to being told what to do like that. Yeah, how did your family take your decision to go in? My mom was happy, my brother, my wife was happy, my grandfather, who was a pastor, was like, dude, what are you doing? <laughs> he wasn't very, he wasn't very patriotic about it because he, we were in a wartime and he was just trying to make sure I was okay. So he was like one of those guys like, I don't think you should do it right now. But I told him, I'm not going in for a job, Gramps. I'm going in because I feel like I should give back. And I feel like that this is what I'm there. They're telling me what I'm going to do. And I'm going to legitimately give back, Gramps. And he was just, you know, being old. He was, he was scared for his grandson. Some of the family members looked at me like I was nuts. They're like, how could you do it? They don't make a lot of money. They looked at it like, again, like some of the guys looked at it like I was going for a job. I'm like, no, dude, it doesn't work like that when you're in. And I explained to them, it, it's a lifestyle, but it's an overall, look at, I'm gonna tell you like this, going to the military was the best thing I could have ever done. I, it was hardest, the hardest thing, but it was the best, the gnarliest, because I evolved as a man. I understood society and people so much better. But when I went in after I learned chain of command and rule and such and such, and I would say that once you get out, nothing's gonna stop you because I have friends, guys that I, literally friends that I was there with and they got out, but they're making 150 grand a year. And I, I tell guys, I'm like, if you do it properly, you can be very well off, but give back the way you should. You know what I mean? And he did a friend, a couple of friends of mine did it like that. And it's stuff that you get proud of. You, you start to realize how much more is in it because when you, before you go in, you don't know. I understand that I'm going to defend my country and stuff, but you don't understand the history. And then once you understand what a chief has to go through to be a chief, and it, it's the most beautiful to me. It's the coolest thing ever, dude. But I tell guys, I'm like, it's gonna be a wake up call because all the crap you thought you could get away with, they're gonna call you out instantly. Whatever you thought mommy or daddy's gonna let you get away with, it's a good wake up call because I saw the guys who who needed the wake up call, but then I would see the guys who were there every morning. How old were you when you enlisted? I was like twenty two. Okay, so you were a slightly older guy. Yeah. So when I went in, and I was in boot camp, I saw this dude literally like six foot seven freaking out because they were sitting there screaming at him in his face chief would get up on a ladder or a little step and be like what are you doing you know what i mean I, and i tell the guys i'm like i'd be there at attention and i'd be there trying not to laugh because i knew that the chief was doing it for the right reason and it was weird because i was a little older so i could see how i would have reacted at that age and I'm there like, dang, yo, this is nuts. This guy's screaming at this guy and this guy's crying because he doesn't understand it. This guy's just training you to be a, a sailor. Because I tell the guys, if you can't deal with the stress, boot camp's gonna help you deal with the stress. They'll figure you out. They'll, they'll, they'll figure out how to tweak up on you for you to be better, for you to evolve in your mindset. Because it's weird. They literally look at you and try to figure you out to help you which is the gnarliest thing ever. Nobody really does things like that. It's going out of your way. You know what I mean? Yeah, definitely. It's <clears throat> boot camp was a big learning experience. I think for everyone who's been through it and yeah, like I was a, I did some stuff with the Navy before I joined as a kid and it still didn't prepare you for what you got when you walked in the door at boot camp. 
no way, dude. It, it was different. And I, it, it was, it was legitimate wake up call yeah. because society is different in the military. You're on base. You are held to a very different standard. And I love it. I, I could honestly say it was the gnarliest thing because everybody learned. Everybody figured out how to be together. Everybody figured out that it was one team, one fight. No matter who you were, no matter how different you were, you had something that we needed you for. Yeah. Did you uh, take leave after boot camp? Did I take leave after boot camp? Because I'm curious um, if you went, if you if if your grandpa saw you in uniform after boot camp. No, no. After boot camp, they transferred me and my wife was in Florida waiting to, to be stationed near me. So I didn't use any leave. No, I was once I was in, I stayed in. And when they put when I, when I transferred from boot camp to the other side, and then it was just it was more me learning the trade, me learning how to be on a ship, me learning how uh, PO1 Petty Officer First Class was explaining things. And then he would, we would stand watch. We were learning, you know, we learned that in boot camp. But when you go to school, as you progress in your schooling, you're also doing things you're going to do normally in the Navy as, as a sailor, standing watch, holding it, holding, standing the guard down. <laughs> Even during hours and such and such, which we all learned it, no matter who you are, no matter what your rank is, even chiefs got to do it. You got to stand watch. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, definitely. So I take it FC school was across the street in Great Lakes. Yeah. So Very much. you did your school. You got that nice little package at the end that said, you know, Seaman Reyes is going somewhere. Where was your first command? I got K I got sent to Dogren, Virginia. Where the Most hell people don't is even, that? Dude, Dogren is, exa you know what? Oh. Dogren is in the middle of Bufu. Dolph Dogren is literally on the crevice of the anus of Maryland. And right where the bridge where Maryland and Virginia cross over, the base is right there on the on, on, on the shore side. And it's it's literally in the middle of nowhere. There's nothing, it, it's there's literally nothing to do. Everybody always goes to Maryland. But again, going there was another wake up call because as you went up i was i was uh, i was trying to make petty officer third class out of uh c school out of virginia and i was trying to get orders to california which in the military is a little different because they, they they basically let you know you're going to be doing all this stuff and you're going to have a, a grade point average basically. And based on the best student basically is the way it goes down. Hands down, you are, you get first choice. Yeah. My wife was deaf, which kind of saved me because I wasn't the first student. I was, you know, I was doing well, but I wasn't number one. But I, but I fell in love with the job. That was the difference. I, I just, I just would want to learn so much. And I would even go to the other side to look at the missiles and whatnot when they were doing things and teaching and explaining. And I'm there like, even on my downtime, because I, I would think about it in this manner. I was like, if I'm an FC and my job is missiles, I got to be ready for this, dude. This is not going to be something like, like the scenarios they tell you. I looked at them online sometimes. It, that's not an easy scenario to deal with. You're talking with so many, you're trained to deal and talk with so many people in your combat station when you're on a ship. You know that dark room on the TV show? They don't let you in there unless you have a clearance. I tell guys, I'm like, you're not getting in there unless you're supposed to or need to be in there. There, There's the captain knows, the captain's the captain. I'm not dealing, I'm not. The captain is like the king of the ship. He, own, he doesn't own it, but he's the one who delegates from the highest. Yeah. And I, 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 I tell guys, even when you're on the ship and you're, even when you get off a of boot camp and you go to your C school and you're learning and you try to make friends with the guys that you're going to try to be like, try to figure out who's going to, who you're going to migrate or who's going to have that mindset that wants it as bad as you do. 
or or wanted it as bad as you do now, but they've been evolving with that mindset. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, there, there's a saying in, in the last community that I was in uh, on the Marine side, which is those who, oh God, what was it? It was those who want it, you can't keep them from it. And those who don't will go out of their way to hide from it. Yeah, yeah, the dude who wants to work hard. You see, dude, I'm a guy in a wheelchair making wheelchairs. My legs don't work. I learned how to weld. That was crud that the Navy helped me figure out. The Navy always told us like this. You might not be able to do it the way you do it right now, but you can always figure out a way. And sometimes you can't do it by yourself. That takes teamwork and camaraderie. And they explain to you brothers and sisters and these guys are with you till the end. You're on the ship with them. This is your family. And then you get off and you see the other ships and those are your family, your cousins. It's just your big, your brothers and sisters on another ship. It, it's the coolest thing because being in the Navy, it, it was like going back to society a little bit when society, when America was the gun ho everybody wanted to be American. Everybody was fleeing their country to come here. Even when we said, no, you can't, they would still try to break in. They wanted in. It was that good. Oh, now I look at boot camp and I see some of the new stuff and I tell the guys, the Navy's changing. I saw the new ship named after the Navy SEAL who jumped on the grenade. Oh, yeah. Um, oh, God, why am I drawing a blank? Michael Monsoor. Yeah, dude. Brother, man. When I hear about that, dude, that to me is the epitome of a sailor. To die for his, I'm like, I when I saw, when I hear stuff, that's what I saw, dude. I told my wife, if I go to war and die, just understand I did it because I love my country and you guys enough to die for it. And he was one of them that did it. So when I think about him, I still think about him, dude. I want to make a chair after him, dude. This ship is so bad, eh, dude. It's just, dude, I saw the ship, dude. The 1001, it's freaking loophole. It's it, it, it makes me appreciate, admire, and respect my Navy so much more. So where did you go after sea school? Did you go to a ship or did they sail? Yeah, I, I got from from sea school straight to the ship. I, I got straight to SD, San Diego. Um, I was in San Diego and we were on dock for a little bit. Not long, and then we started doing tours. And during doc, they would just tell me, "Look, this is what you have to do." I was going through. They would tell. They would. They would show us, and it was cool because they delegated. They never from up top gave you an order. They would delegate. Okay, you know you're above him. You give him the order, and you take the order from him, and you take the order from her, and you take the order from her, and from him, from her. And it's cool because it always worked. What what type of ship did you go to? Ooh, I was on a CG. A CG and a DDG, they pretty much do the same thing as just the CG's bigger. Houses a little more ammo and missiles. So was that a, how was your first time out at sea being a city guy? Dude, bro, that was the craziest crud ever. Dude, it was, they're like, okay, we're going for 10 days. We're gonna do a tester for 10 days. I'm like, what does that mean? I didn't know what that was. And then this chick, uh, uh, FC2 Choppa, at the time I heard she got out, she looked at me like, oh, you're gonna learn. You'll, <laughs> you'll find out what that is. She was FC2 and I'm FC3 and she's like, and I was there like, man, why is this lady being such a cocky goon with me? I, what the hell did I do to her? And she's there like, you'll see. And it, it was the coolest thing because they knew that you were going to freak out. They knew you were going to fucking loophole. I'm sorry, I cursed. I'm no, sorry. no, it's totally fine. It's totally, we're, we're sailors. Okay. It's what we do. I'm a, I can curse. Oh, yeah. dude, I was trying to be politically <laughs> extravagant and all this weird shit. Yeah, dude, I, I sharted all over the place. It was instant anal air and ease and fecal matter all over the galley, dude. I was, dude, the decks were just smackered in my poop. <laughs> I would go up to the deck just to jog in circles. Cause I would go up to just look, dude, I would look at it and I would literally look at the missiles and I would start freaking out. I'm like, 
I got to understand what's going to happen now. And then I'd be like, yo, what are you guys going to do now? And then we just be practicing. And I tell the guys, when you're out to sea and you think the Navy's not doing nothing, shut your fucking hole in your face, your orifice, <laughs> put something in it like a fucking donut and shit to fucking monkeys. Because we're out there figuring out and making sure that when it's time to go to war, that we can and nobody messes up. Dude, one girl freaked out, started shitting herself at the station. Ah! I, like, I heard about that. I like, Forget it, bro. She <laughs> lost it. They ended up taking her. And I heard about girls getting and guys getting, like literally male and female, literally getting changed rate from FC. Let me tell you guys, if you think you're going to get in and play crazy and get out, they're going to read your ass. It doesn't work like that. They know if you're crazy. They have professional psychologists, psychiatrists, pros with PhDs that do this for a living. There's no way you're getting out of it. They know if you're full of it. And on the ship, dude, you'll see people exaggerating crap, but you'll see us who know. I'm like, um, mm -mm, I'm not doing that. And they would get sent to change rate. They should make them change a job, dude. They sent them to another job, but worst of all, it was never a job. It was uh, uh, undesignated. Oh, damn. Paint trippers. Yeah. yeah, we call them paint strippers. We call them strippers, nickname. Because all they do is chip the paint and repaint the ship all day. The flooring, you know, that, that, that nice, hard, rugged stuff that looks nasty? They are made to redo it all the time and make it look as nasty as it was. And well, you guys were in an air conditioned CIC. Yeah. Hell yeah. Fuck yeah. <laughs> choose your rate, choose your fate. Amen. I was willing to defend, and, and but I knew that if my ship got hit, I was fucked. That's the truth, dude. That's the truth. That place is in the middle. Where are we going? Where are we getting out? Bad day. You guys saw. God rest his soul, bro, for for our brother who, who they had to fucking close it up on when oh, they... Yeah. You remember that when they had yeah. to lock him in? You know what it is to fucking have to hear that guy scream? If you guys don't know what real hardship is, you better fix that shit when you disrespect the sailor, bro. You see the shit we got to do. And if you have... Here, this is the shit that makes me laugh about when they talk about FCs. Push button, they call us, too. If you knew all the shit you had to hear and get to before you get to that stage, you you just shut your mouth. It's a stressful scenario. It's not the happiest thing. It's literally you trying to make sure you're not going to die or nobody else is going to die with you. Because we're making sure the aircraft carrier's not getting hit. The aircraft carriers don't have missiles. We all know that. They got sea whips, but that's our job. It's all of us around, we do what we got to do. But that's when you see chiefs being chiefs. That's when you see that anchor get nice and wet. And he, he puts foot to ass and he'll step in if he got to and he does whatever they can do. And it's the coolest thing to watch this chief. When he says he can do your job or she says you can do your job, they can, bro. They literally know your job. I tell guys, it's the coolest thing. You hit the, you hit a combat zone, you know how unified everybody is. They call us push button, but dude, you see the guy who's over there talking on the radio, he's, all he does is, but he's relaying info that we need. If not, we're gonna get poop pounded. You know what I mean? So after you guys did your 10 day tour, did you guys hit any weather while you were out there? Dude, there was a time that, yeah, we had to close everything down and everything got shook. And they were like, yo, it's going to be a rough night. There's no sleeping going on with that shake, when that ship is shaking and you can go through those waves. You can feel that. Ooh. And, dude, you're not sleeping. You, you, you'll be like, dude, what are you going to do? All the guys are awake just talking, yo, trying to. Trying not to think something's gonna happen. You're like, yo, this is, this, you know, this is just a ship. <laughs> we start thinking like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. But the Navy knows. You know what I mean? Going on there, you, you, I stressed out, dude. Me and the guys, we, it, but it built camaraderie. You stress out with your guys. You're going over scenarios. You're going over again. 
and again, and they're purposely trying to stress you out to get you to be able to deal with the situation stress. They build you, bro. The military is, is honestly, dude, I miss it, dude. Till this day, I, think I go on do. base just to go on base. Yeah, I think we all do. So did you, you ever... I mean, go ahead. You know, I'm listening. Oh, I was going to say, so did you guys ever do like a Westpac into the Gulf or... I remember us doing, I got a TBI, so I lost some memory. And I remember us doing formation circles. I remember us doing that, going to places. There was a time from my remembrance, some of the guys got purple hearts on the ship. I was doing my job, of course, but there was a scenario where we had to go somewhere and get some Marines out of water. From what I was told about it, because most of it, I don't even remember, dude. I just remember when it was time to go to work, get your ass to get your station now. That's all I remember. And then when the, the TBI and all that, I had guys explain to me and they would explain to me. They're like, yo, man, that was a stressful day, dude. We were fucked. I'm like, what happened? They're like, it was a little different because there were guys that they were trying to get the, the Marines out. They were they were basically everything that they had practiced for was really going down, dude. It was gnarly. It was crazy because you had to stand watch. If you were on the floor, if you were somewhere else, you had to be, the ship was, we were all in squadron. We were all in formation. You have to be able to do this to be able to go somewhere. You know what I mean? Yeah. But it gives you the bigger mindset as to how everybody has to work together for it to function. So do you mind talking about your TBI and what made you end your Navy career? That was the last scenario they told me. I was, they said we went to do something and then we went for a motorcycle ride. And I was at the end because you know me, I was waiting to put on my, my second class, but I'm the new guy. You know, you put the chiefs in the front, you keep it, same thing like the military. When you're riding with a group of military, the chiefs go in the front. So we're, we're just, I, I, we went for a ride and they said that, the chief said that I hit a dip because it was a road I never knew and I was at the end and it basically slingshotted me. It basically like, uh, what's it called? Um, catapult, basically catapulted me. The rear suspension on the bike, it, it, it compressed all the way they said and I just flunked because I don't weigh crap, dude. On a good day on that bike, I was a buck 40. Oh, wow. On a good day. So they said I hit the wall, I bounced off the wall. I, they don't know where I was. I woke up in Alvarado after having surgery in Sharp. I don't, I, I don't even remember the first month. What? That's, that's the truth. Where was, where was this at? Where's Sharp? Um, Sharp or San Diego. Oh, okay, okay. So yeah, dude, it, I was in Cali. We went, we were, for something happened, whatever that ride, they said that I was catapulted, whatever. And then uh, they thought I was going to die. I wasn't supposed to live from my understanding. Oh, wow. No, yeah, dude. Let's just, I'll just tell I never, to never speak about this stuff, to, this shit to anybody. I wasn't supposed to live. My mom and my wife were fighting about pulling the cord. My mom was going to pull the cord, dude. That shit broke my heart. My wife was the one who kept saying no. My wife and my mom got into it. My wife had to have my mom put out because my mom was doing things that a mother shouldn't do. Oh, wow, man. I'm sorry for that. Yeah, bro, it was bad. And I, I, I don't remember any of it. I just remember, I, I don't remember, I, my chief, who he retired, senior chief. I love you, chief, man. Godspeed. I still talk to, he was the one who had to kick my mom out the house for trying to do shady stuff with bank accounts. And my wife is deaf. So my mom did something from my understanding at the time that she shouldn't have done. She's a different person now from my comprehension. We'll talk more about that later. But I was in a coma. My mom was doing stuff. My brother had flew in. My dad had flown in. I don't remember any of this. My dad was just drinking beers and walking around. My wife was just dealing with the stress and 
my chief senior chief Snyder stepped in. He was the one who was delegating everything for me because I couldn't, because I couldn't even hold memory, dude. So before this, when my mom and my wife are going at it, they thought I was gonna die. I was in a coma for 10 days. And then the doctor told my wife and mom, if he wakes up, he's gonna be special. My wife didn't care. My wife was like, no, I want, I want my husband. I know he's, I don't know, dude, dude, I got a good one. She's still with me. You know what I mean? And her fighting with my mom, they put my mom out. My wife was there waiting for me in a coma. And eventually I woke up. My wife said, I'll tell you what my wife said. My wife said she did a, 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 a little prayer and something and then i woke up Crazy. that's all i my wife go ahead oh no no i was just saying that that's crazy that that happened that way dude it, my chief was basically my dad i never had a dad growing up my dad was a crackhead he's still a crackhead um it was it was it was weird because my wife's family didn't step in really from Florida. So my wife's a deaf lady by herself dealing with these two newborn babies almost, a two-year-old and a one-year-old, and her husband in a coma. Yeah, and she's dealing, her family didn't even help her. Nobody even didn't even come to help the deaf girl and the two babies. Wow. Which gave me a mind, an eye-opener about family. And that's why I tell guys, I like, look guys, the military, if you don't have family, you will, because they stepped in. Chief would take the money out of his own pocket to give my wife money for food. Things he didn't have to do. You know what I mean? Things that just gentlemen do. Yeah. And I was, I still talk to him. To me, he's, I still love him. So let's talk briefly about your recovery. Because obviously you're here, you're, you're communicating well. What year did this happen? 12, 13, I think. Okay, so about eight years later. Now. Yeah, now is like now, eight years yeah, later. Yeah, I, I, well, I've been in the chair eight, ten, nine years I've been in the chair, I think. Again, I don't really remember most of those times. Those are just, I legitimately don't remember dates like that as specific or timing. Right. Sometimes. Where I was going with that, was, tough, dude. how did the Navy treat you during your recovery? Or were they just trying to push you out? Um, no, nah, dude. It was, uh, honestly, you can see some of the higher ups trying to put me out. Trying to get me to sign paperwork fast. Okay. Uh, or basically, I didn't know if they were trying to get me out fast because of things that they didn't, uh, of, how could I say, they didn't agree with, they didn't like, they thought that they had the right to judge, and they were trying to be mean about it, even though they weren't there for the scenario. You know what I mean? Right. So they kind of got, they, they, they do a full investigation. They did a full investigation, and they look like, no, it's not even his fault. What are you talking about? Because they're going to try to figure out if it's your fault because you won't be retired. If it's your fault, you'll be separated and you'll get VA medical. You can go to medical, but you 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 won't get like direct VA compensation. Right. I know. Um, yeah, that screws a lot of people. Motorcycle accidents, especially back in pretty much between like 06 and 13 we're always treated with, I don't want to say suspicion, but with a closer eye than, than no, there, were, there was a guy. I'll tell you this story. There was a guy, a friend of mine, a shipmate. Uh, he was a second class. He was drive drinking and driving. And, uh, he flipped on the eight Oh five in San Diego somewhere. He hit the, the median flipped. So basically he drinking and driving illegal, irrational at times. But doing something that he thought he could have got away with and from and they ended up just separating him. He's semi quad and I don't say names because I'm not like that, but he was having a bad day and he was drinking and driving and he ended up 
in a chair and not getting help and whatnot because it was an irrational situation that he could have dealt with better. Yeah. Because me and my situation and the motorcycles, I'm with you, dude. They try, they tell you, yo, they do a full investigation to make sure you're not going and gun bucking through the canyon like a sick wad. Which, you know, I know guys have testosterone. I know all of us want to go fast and do crazy, but you got to be logical sometimes, yo. Oh, yeah. Yeah, definitely. And I, I know when I was in Pendleton in, oh, God, 06, oh, oh no, oh, 05, oh, 06, before I deployed. Yeah. There was at least 10 Marines who were killed on their motorcycles all the time till this day and a lot of them were like no helmets it's, it's because you know, again again it's, it's a pride scenario it's the pride scenario that instead of them listening to chief and the law and gunny who's looking out for you to wear your helmet you want to try a lot of them honestly want to be that cool guy they let their pride get the best of them and then they want to be the badass, and then they end up getting fucked. Yep, they by do. themselves. Yep, it breaks my heart because I see my home, my, my friends like me. That that it, it, you go, you come back, you do things you don't remember, but you did things, and you look and you come back, and they. I see guys respect us a little differently too. You know what I mean? Yeah, which I don't agree with that shit because I tell guys I know Marines who've gone to Afghanistan nine times and they're back here and they end up in a wheelchair because they get hurt here. How is that? How, how, how could you treat him different? He's still gonna wreck your ass if you piss him off. Yeah, you know what I mean? Because they're dude. I met some guys. I met a guy. He went, dude. He he got hurt here and he was just he did nine tours on land, dude in Afghanistan as a driver and I was there like, dude, he would tell me, we, we, we would just go over stories. He was just a cool guy. But again, he would tell me that his home, his brother Lee Marines wouldn't respect him the same way they would respect the guy who stepped on an IED. That's just crazy all around. I, I, I that's why when I see that shit, I just tell the guys, you, you should leave him alone, dude. Respect because his, I knew one guy I know a bunch of guys on the Navy team. I'm gonna tell you like this. I got I'm on the Navy team for the Warrior Games this year. And it got postponed because of the whole COVID thing. And you, you know, you go, you hang out with the guys, you see the guys who are having like they're 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 still wreckful because of all the tours and whatnot, dude. And they can walk and they can talk, but the PTSD with them, dude. When the memory hits them and you see them fall on the floor, it's I, okay. I'm I'm a... Yeah, a, a guy was spasming out of, we were at the, the warrior camp and the dude, I don't know what happened, dude. He was just a shipmate and he just started going. And I'm like, what the, f I'm fucking flipping out. Like, yo, shit. So I go up to him smoothly, not to attract attention to him, just see if he's okay. Like, you good? He's like, yeah. And I tell guys, this is the shit you don't see. Yeah, he's walking down the street sometimes, but you don't see when this happens and he falls on the floor and he bounces his face off the floor. And I try to tell the guys just, we're a family, no matter what, we're all together. Either you're a yeoman, whether you're a fucking gunny, whether you're a fucking chief, yo, you're still one of us. Yep. It's one fucking team, one fucking fight. If you don't like that shit, you should have never fucking joined, yo. I agree. And some of the guys, I see them joining for the wrong reasons, and when they get their asses ringed, I'm like, you had that shit coming. Yep, I agree with that 100%, man. So, real quick, speaking of the Warrior Games, because I wanted to get to that, um, how did you get hooked up with Safe Harbor? Safe Harbor saw me acting me. I was doing the wheelchair stuff wheelchair WCMX wheelchair motocross at the time that's what made me want to build chairs but I was always in a skate park in a wheelchair always hey, wait, doing wait, wait, back, 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 back up there's a what was it WCMX okay the sport is fairly new um, it's called WCMX wheelchair motocross no we're not on a fucking motorcycle okay that's just something I do Okay, so, um, yo, 
it's cool because I thought there weren't people in wheelchairs who were just as messed up as I was here. Uh, you know what I mean? Yeah. So I, I go online. I see this guy, Aaron Wheels, fathering him, and I see him at the skate park in a wheelchair, and I'm there like, "What the fudge? Holy fucks!" And I get all boom, and I just gun by. I just like, "What's going?" So I just did it. I get so excited, dude, because that's the sailor in me. And I'm like, I'm gonna go hit the skate park up. So I do it and I start bending frames and then I get sponsored by Colors Wheelchairs. Um, I was sponsored by Fox Shocks, uh, are, Spinergy Wheels. Are you still in at the time? Nah, I was, uh, I was out maybe a year. Cause I was here. WC and Max was what helped me with my depression. And oh, my okay. PTSD. So the wheelchair motocross, me going in a gun bucket and hardcore at the skate park is what gave me that outlet to be me, to be able to go be rough. Because I didn't like being in a wheelchair. I couldn't go do shit that I wanted to do. You know what I mean? I wanted. To, I love the skate park. So I'm like, I can't go on a bike. I can't go on a board. I can't go on, on, on blades. I, I can't do nothing. I was angry. So I'm there like... I learned about WCMX and then I started getting good. I competed 2015. I'll show you this. Give me a segundo. All right. All right. So right now Rico is pulling something up on his computer. It's top secret. We're not quite sure what we're about to see. So let's see what he brings back. Or maybe. It's hey paper. guys, you know what? I just start showing you all the crap I'm doing. Let's make this conversation more interesting. <laughs> talking about PTSD and all the depression. We got more fun shit to talk about. Like me on a, on a, on a you know what? I'll be PG about this right now. I'm not trying to get in trouble. <laughs> okay, here. My nickname, of course, is my real name is Jason Reyes. My nickname is Rico. So here it goes. At the bottom, I was one of the competitors. There goes the April Saturday. Yes. WCMX. I competed. All the players, all the all the athletes signed off on it. We, we you know we did our own autograph to be cocky about the first one, and then that year I was fourth in the world. Damn. That felt gnarly. That felt so gnarly to go compete with guy. A guy came from Brazil, dude, to compete. Then we had Aaron. We had me. We had Blake's. Uh, we had a bunch of guys, and it was it was cool. So we had a guy from Spain. Let, let me ask you this. So would you consider W hold on, I'm gonna screw this up. WCMX closer to BMX or closer to skateboarding? I'd say WCMX would be the epitome of both of them coming together. The reason why I'm asking is because the Olympics now has skateboarding. And Yeah, and I'm waiting. I heard about they might add WCMX. As a parasport then. And if that's the case, hey, guys, hey, guys, Navy, Marine, Army, Air Force, I'm going to try, and I'm going to try to serve us proudly because whoever's down to practice, if they give us that outlet, let's, let's, let's set some world records, bro. It felt good to compete 2015 and be ranked fourth. And it's cool because I tell guys, when you start doing all the shit that nobody wants to do and you start just saying fuck it and just having fun, and doing it, you're going to get attention. You're going to motivate people. And you're not even going to try to do it. I made friends and, and they guys tell me, oh, man, you man, you get us to do a lot of crazy shit that we don't think about. I'm like, why? They're like, because you're one of the guys who just goes and does it. Then I remember I tell some of the Marines and, and the sailors that I'm like, you got to remember that. That's the military. We're the guys that go and do the shit that nobody wants to do. But aren't you proud? Who fucking y'all, right? You know what I mean? And yeah. wait till I, you know what? I'm going to take, I'm going to just take you on this one. Are you ready? Here we go. Can We're I go on a tour? You want to go here? Look, this is my gym. Supposedly. This is how I get my swollen. <laughs> so, um, um, wait, so when, what's the difference between what you compete in and this prototype? Oh, okay. When I was sponsored, I had a chair and I would bend frames. And then the VA would get me other chairs and I would bend frames. And the thing is, in the wheelchair world, 
it, it's not cheap if you bend the frame, dude. Look at my, see? The wheelchair, it, it's not cheap, dude. That's, that's another reason why I want to try to make it in-house because it's so expensive. Nobody can afford a chair every five years. You usually need a new chair, right? They say a chair should last you about a five years, they say. Dude, I was chewing through chairs within months. I, I had one chair that was a titanium frame. I went off a six inch curb. I bent the whole front caster in. I was like, what? And then I had my uh, a frame that the, the VA got me, a chair that uh, I don't want to say company names, but I bent the caster frame housing. Uh, another one. I did it twice to do to those frames. Sponsored. I was I bent it, but they the beautiful thing about sponsorship is they'll fix it for you. I would be like, hey, and then but the cool thing about them is when you're sponsored and you do something like that, they go repair that shit. You know what I mean? But you got to make sure that the company you work with could legitimately support that. So now with um, but with your chair. When we were trying out for, say, wheelchair rugby or some of the wheelchair games for Warrior Games. Yeah. How did those hold up relative to what, how you think yours is going to hold up? Um, the rugby chairs, the rugby frames are gnarly. Those guys, they know what they're doing. Um, wheelchair frames, they got them good. I don't see anything wrong. It, it's just, in my opinion, again, um, there has to be evolution. There has to be a differentiation. It has to change to make it where it can keep being made. And instead of it going up in price, it can stay economical and or nor be able to become economical. So I'm going to do the custom thing here beginning. And I'm talking with Semper Fi. I'm going to get my, my plasma and all my stuff. So listen. It's gonna happen, guys. I'm not. I'm not fucking around. I want, and I want to. I'm gonna make a chair for the skate park. Listen, I test all my own chairs. That's why I was gonna Peter. ask you. Was go ahead. So is is this one an everyday, all around, just general purpose chair? And then you'll make general a skate park. Chair. Okay. Then you'll do a but, skate park one. Oh no! I'm gonna. I can go to the skate park in that chair. Oh wow! And it's still a daily chair. That's how strong it is. Oh, damn. that's what I'm going for. Yeah. So that's where I try to top it. That's why I tell guys I do my well. My welder is a different guy. He's a friend of the fan, but he has licensing. He went to the same school I went to for welding. And he, he, you know what? You guys will see him. I'll post him online. His welding is beautiful. It's like stacking dimes. It looks gorgeous. I'm trying to keep it small and in-house, but also make it change. I'm tired of everybody's same old style. I used to be, okay. You remember Sean Co? Sean Mahaney? No. Okay. There was a wheelchair company called Sean Co Wheelchairs. They're still out there, but it's smaller now because the lead guy of it who created it was Sean Mahaney from West Coast Customs. You know, the welder who used to do all the crazy chair, all the crazy work on the cards for the famous people? Oh, yeah. The yeah. TV show? Yeah. He died in an accident. He was ran over. He was hit by a vehicle on a motorcycle. And he died. And he created a wheelchair made by the for the rapper 2 Chains so that the 2 Chains, the rapper, could perform on stage and still had a wheelchair with two chain links on it, which to me was the epitome of customization. You know what I mean? So I'm here. I, we became friends. And we started just talking and it's just relaying ideas and uh bro that he went he was retired and he was put into the low rider hall of fame this is how monstrous this guy was um and he would tell me a bunch of stuff and he was still doing it his way but he would tell me the little things that he would do with the companies to differentiate from the other companies but if you go to sean co wheelchairs and look at some of his old school custom chairs each chair is basically a one-off oh wow and he, he would tell me, he would meet with the people, they would come and he would meet with them. He didn't have none of the, the, the medical stuff, so he would just do a small time out of his garage, which is why he taught me. I, I got the, I got, here dude, I got the, the welding table, Sean taught me that. I got a lathe, Sean taught me that. I got a, 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 a band saw with, with grinders, this is all from Sean. Damn, he, he opened my head up to this. 
but he was also big on military too. He was creating chairs that it was, he would go and see and see things and put them into the chairs like gun mounts and things. And I'm there like, how you put a gun mount? And he's like, look, and he would <laughs> go and he, dude, the sick dude, one guy had a nine millimeter. You know what? I have a gun mount on this chair that nobody knows about. It hides behind my leg. I just pivot, grab it, reverse, and come out. Even off of the safety, I can re- put my hand all the way in, quick off the safety, off the, the 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 holster, and pull it out. These are the things that I'm making for the guys who want to go shoot more. I like shooting. We want to go hunting. I want to make a wheelchair that when you go hunting, it's made for hunting. Nice, nice. Come out here and I'll I'll take you hunting too. Hey, dude, we're going to hang out, dude. We'll do more. So you trike. Go ahead. Oh, I was going to ask you. So did you do a Warrior Games before we met in what, 2019? Yeah, I did a Warrior Games. We got got a couple medals. Yeah, it was uh, when the Army hosted it. So that must have been 15 then. It was 15 because, yeah, I did 2016 Invictus where we, we, we got basketball and rugby and we did well. So how did you feel about going back and hooking up with Team Navy? How was that experience for you? It was, it was nice to see shipmates. It was nice to feel normal. It's different when you're around military. They, they be, we behave a little... We know, we, we, we behave how we did when we were in, basically, but we're still grown up. You know what I mean? Yeah. But it, it, it's, it's like being around brothers and sisters. Everybody helps each other. Everybody's there. Everybody's all about this, all about that. And then you're doing fun crap. Don't get me wrong. You still have your, your tobaccos. <laughs> you know what I mean? You, you still have your issues with your shitmates. Oh, yeah. And that, that's when you get, to, you get to, quote, unquote, teach people lessons, we call it. You know how to flip people over on chairs, and you watch rugby and all that. I used to love watching those guys. Troy McGurk, who was a gold medalist from like 2000, and he's a, just a civilian. He is one of the guys that I met that would tell me a bunch of stuff about the wheelchair world that needed. And all the, but he was also the guy who showed me all the crazy crap that people were skydiving in wheelchairs. I didn't know. And I'm there like, dude, that's, look at, I'm going to, I got a road trip plan. I'm going to tell you like this. Okay. You know, the bike that I'm building in the back, it's almost, it it was done. Okay. Oh, okay. I'll tell you guys what happened. I got the, uh, I I built that trike, right? And then I put some uh, Harley hydraulic low rider suspension so I can slam it. It overheated because I went drifting on it. And, uh, me and the guys want to take it. We want to go for a ride ride with anybody who's down just to go. And it's going to, I don't, I've seen guys already. I already know guys in SoCal who are paras with trikes, custom bikes ready. Their own guy built it, but I'm going to bring mine that I built with my hands. I call it the frog man. It's going to get a, a paint job like a, a frog. It's going to have the, sk- the, the the frog back and whatnot, like the Navy SEALs. Everything that I'll do for the for my chair, I want it militant, military style. I tell guys, get it. I even want to – we got to get it to where we can go. I try to get – I went shooting with some of the guys out here. I know you've seen me on YouTube and Instagram, Instagram or Facebook a long time ago shooting with the guys in the canyon. I'm trying to get stuff like that going again because after COVID, they put a shit shot stop on everything, dude. That was even with the wheelchair company, bro. I had I was waiting for another school. So has the um let's uh, let's go to COVID real quick. So during the last eighteen months, the last time I saw you in person, we were leaving um, Fort Wayne in two thousand and twenty in January. I- Pretty certain, yeah. pretty certain every one of us at that camp were patient zeros. Um, I don't know of too many of us that actually have gotten COVID since then, so that's why I believe that. But what happened when you got home? 
with the COVID thing? With life in general, after uh, you got home from Dude, that camp. It was, it felt like freedom was taken. Everything was closed. We can't go out, you can't do nothing. And then I, I was there losing my fucking mind. Losing my mind because I tell the guy, then I thought about it, I'm like, I'm here freaking out. PTSD, ADHD, losing my, f I can only imagine what my brethren are doing right now. So I freaked out and I started worrying. And what really made me really shit it, dude, it, it, I, my chief from the Invictus Games, from my understanding, was one of the 22. If nobody knows what the 22 is, there's a number, it's called 22 a day. About 22 veterans a day commit suicide. He was one of them. But the, also, it had gone up to 30 veterans a day at one time. And uh, what was it? He was, he committed suicide after. And I don't know if it was because of COVID and all that crap. Or I don't. It was. It was before COVID. But I, I, for me, when COVID hit, shit like that hit me harder. Yeah. But I'm trying to say. I'm sorry, my brain. No, no, dude. It's all good, man. I. 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 You. You. You dwell on it more when you're alone and you're locked down in your house and you can't go outside. Dude, the skate parks were closed. They're just open for outdoors. The week I couldn't even go to a skate park. I was losing it. Then I was thinking about everybody else in a wheelchair. The little kids with uh, spina biff, the veterans with PTSD. I was like, this is this this shit got it got worse. It went from twenty two to thirty. And then I was there like I I was by myself, and you know we all have our problems. You know we all think about stupidity. And then I just started trying to focus on what what can be done to get this slowed down and stopped. Then it started balancing out. It finally started opening up. We started being able to talk to people more and do more, and everybody started leveling out. You know what I mean? Yeah, because you're still out there in California, right? Yeah, California, they're strict, dude. But look, I tell you like this. If it's strict, think about it in the intellectual aspect they're just being careful it's not them starting trouble it's not them wanting issues it's not the cops being mean everybody all that bull crap with the cops no it's them just being dude if it was as fake as everybody thought it was how come so many died from it that one hit me because i knew people who got it i knew people who got it i knew people in the hospital with the tube in their throat Look, at, I had a friend in Miami that before it even had the name COVID, he got it. And I was there like, this, this, this crap is real, dude. It's legitimate because, dude, he, was in the, he had the respirator, the suit on. Then a few days ago, somebody died. We, I just came back from a funeral. Some family member, and they said at the hospital they think he got COVID. And I tell guys, if you think it's not fudging real, you better fix that crap because I'm a guy and I'm, I went to the VA. I went, this was the one that scared me at the beginning, which I wasn't scared at first because I was from the time where I heard about SARS. Right. But when I, hey, there were people dying, dude, they literally had to quarantine the, the SCI unit. And that for me, when I see the government do that, that's when you have to know it. There's a little more, it's a little more serious. And then when you see the families and how they have to deal with it, it's hard for my brethren because I saw them at, at look at, I'll tell you like this, you saw who needed the help. They can't, they, 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 they postponed the warrior games. There were some people who needed that dude. Yeah. That's for, cause, <laughs> cause you made the 2020 team, right? Well, what are we in right now? 2021. I got, I'm on this. Did I make the 2020? I think well, I think they I, I think they killed it off or they canceled the games before the team was actually selected, but you were trying out for that one, right? Yeah, yeah. I I tried out for that one. I think so, yeah. 
Then the recent, no, 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 2020. Well, 2020 is when we all went to Port Wainimi. Then, yeah, then, yeah. I think we were supposed to meet up in San Diego, and then they put it to online, and then the games got canceled. I think so, yeah. Yeah. Again, it got depressing. So you how, know much, I mean? how much did COVID hurt you personally for your medical program, or for your medical needs? Bro, even it, it gets scary because if there's a lag on the postage and you get supplies for your medical late it was one time dude you know what f there was a more than one time where i had to drive to the va from my house which is an hour drive an hour 15 minute drive because covid hit and it didn't get here and this and and you know the postage got slow everything was going loophole they were trying to figure it out and it was just getting scary because i'm like I, what if a guy can't drive to get his calf or his meds or his, what's he gonna do? You know what I mean? And I was just scared and worried for everybody, including myself, because I'm like, fuck man, if, if some bad shit happens, like what happened in Texas and everything got stopped up where they couldn't do nothing, I'm gonna die. If they don't get to me in time, I'm dead, bro. People don't realize that SCI life is uh, different. If you don't do what you're supposed to do daily. Uh, what what exactly is SCI? Spinal cord injury. Oh, okay. Okay. Spinal cord injury means here. Your body functions differently. And I didn't learn that till afterwards. I can't move my legs or urinate or stuff like that. Like, like the norm would. So you would use a catheter and whatnot. I just say it because I'm in a chair. So it is what it is. Most people are embarrassed to say they use a catheter. Yeah, it sucks. It's not the most appealing thing to be proud of. Well, I'm not proud, but you gotta be able to accept you sometimes. You know what I mean? Right. And, but for them, again, it's the, the whole COVID thing. Nobody wanted to hang out. Nobody wanted to have a barbecue. Everything got locked down. Medical got put on shut. You're not even allowed to go to the VA unless you have an appointment when all that was going down. So I basically had this like fight and scream when I got to the door. I don't have any of this. I need it now. I need to go back there and talk to pharmacy. And that's what they do. They, they, they can legitify that I'm here for that and I can do that with them if I'm short. So they're like, yeah, they said yes. And then I had to go and order them right there. And they gave me some in the back enough to last me Till they got in the mail, which is still terrifying. Yeah, I mean, because it's already been proved once that you're not that it didn't come. Once you have a a, a UTI, for those who don't know, urinary tract infection, it affects your body differently. You can go into a seizure. You can you can end up kidney failure. You know what I mean? I tell guys it gets complicated if you don't do it how you're supposed to. And COVID really put a hole in that because even the pharmaceutical industry was was dealing with it differently. You know what I mean? Yeah. They were touchy with, with medication. Then I got scared for the guys that need it. Like me, I try to stay away from meds because the least amount I take, the least I'm in the hospital. They'll tell me stuff. that will do this. It'll do that. But then it'll do this. Then I have to take this for this. Then I have to take that for this. Okay. If you're willing to do that, okay. I'm not, dude. I'm not willing to pop pills. I'd rather deal with the pain all day, let my legs spasm a little, and not end up in the hospital from being, uh, you guys saw, the, I don't know if you guys have seen the pictures of me online. A lot of guys end up in the hospital, dude. It's just, and then I saw the guys, the, the, the spinal cord injury guys, in the wheelchair industry online and they they did you saw i saw a bunch of pictures of them in the hospital during COVID. you can see it literally got bad for everybody dude people i was it was dude it was terrified because people in spinal cord injury were dying from what i was told in the in the, in the wheelchair unit basically spinal cord injury unit and we weren't allowed to go back there because they were just scared of somebody breathing COVID. and then i, I tell guys if you don't believe in it I don't know what to, I don't know what to tell you because 
I did microbiology and cell science when I was at the university. And the doctors explained it to me. And I was like, okay. I waited and I saw the people dying. You know what I mean? The doctor's like, I, I can't talk right now. Blah, 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 blah. You can see the docs flipping the fuck out because, well, he's dealing with the new paperwork he's about to dish out to some new family that's crying. The kid that's probably never going to see his dad. <sighs> that shit killed me because I don't, I got kids. Yeah, no, I totally understand what you're saying. So let's take it to a little bit happier place. How was it? Please. How was it the first time you were able to get back to the skate park? Oh, dude. I met that dude, Troy. And we started uh, started talking. He fitted me for a chair. And then with him, I was with him at the skate park all the time. Having this, finally being able to skate again felt good to go down a ramp. Yeah, you fall. Yeah, you get nicked. But you, I wear... I wear spine protectors. I wear elbows, knees. I wear it all. I don't care. I'm not going to get hurt. Anybody who wants to sit there and say I look like a moron, hey, whatever. At least I get to wake up. At least I get to get in my chair and not go home beat up. Because it's harder on your on your body when you're in a chair. But going – it was it, – it, going down the ramp that first time and feeling that – that gravity, that the way you just shoot out of that ramp, for me was the happiest day to be in a wheelchair again. It was, it, I was happy again in a wheelchair because I was trying to find happiness in a wheelchair and I couldn't. I tried a bunch of crap with friends, but then the skate park. And I met guys like Troy McGurk who were in chairs for 20 years before me and they would tell me all the cool stuff. And then they would... Once I can skate and I just, I just, once I learned how to skate and control my chair, I just wanted more. It, it got more fun. The more, when I grind the rails, the guys see that, that, that is not, that's, that is scary as crap when you're grinding a rail, bro. I don't give a fuck what anybody says, dude. A freaking 30 year old, 37 year old grinding a rail. I don't care if you're a 15 year old grinding a rail. It's scary to practice and learn it, but I loved it. And I tell guys, I'm like, that's what you got to do. I found a skate park. I didn't think I was going to find a skate park, but you got to find your skate park. Some guys love hunting. And I know one guy, he lives in Oregon. He hunts all the time. He has a track chair with the tank tracks. And I said, and, and him and I spoke. And he's like, yeah, I hunt all the time. And I'm like, how? He's like, yeah, I just take my track chair. I go post up. I get in the standing position. Wait for it, boom. Go up to it, tie it up, drag it home. And they're like, he please tells me I put it on a little sleigh, I loop it over with the shovel, and I just drag it. Literally, I'm there like, I tell guys, I'm like, you just gotta figure it out. I went mono skiing. That was the, oh, I love mono skiing too. I wanna do it so much more, it's just hard to get one. And then with the VA working, it takes time. Right now, I'm trying to do the mountain bike thing. That's another, you'll see the stupid, you know, not stupid, but fun stuff that I do. For the guys who want to have fun, text me on Instagram and Facebook. Let's go. My bike's about to be done again. I'm about to change the intercooler. The Baja truck's about to be done. To go, we're, we're about to go, uh, the, the, go Baja. I want to go Baja with the guys. And we're going to post it, put it on video, try to get you guys to join us if you want. If you're down. So that's one of the things. So right now it's uh, the end of August, 2021. Um, Got to get into a little bit of a sad area again, but I, I want to bring it up because you're very inspirational. Don't stress, so, brother. So you were chosen to go to Warrior Games this year, right? Yeah. And one of the reasons why I wanted to have you on was to talk about adaptive sports, but between when we first talked about a week ago to today, they have now, the army came back and said, they're not doing Warrior Games this year. Are you going to try for next year or are you looking to now fulfill like a more mentorship role? How much longer do you think you have as an athlete? 
I tell him like this. It, 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 I'm a teammate, but I'm there because they. I feel like they need me. So I try to help them, talk to them, and help them when, the way they I can or think they need it. So the mentor thing, yeah, is it's more while I, I, I think that I'm more there in mentorship even now because it's just mentorship as a coach is different for mentorship as a as a as a teammate right because i'm there with them we're close the teammates and the coaches are separate so that kind of mentor for me yeah i understand it but i want to be more with my shipmates and if i'm gonna be that mentor i do it proudly dude I, I i i i just want more people to go and do more but if nobody's gonna go i'm gonna try out and tell the guys try out have fun make life better so what was the what was the one sport that you were really looking forward to or that when it, obviously there's no uh wheelchair motocross and warrior games i wish dude oh man I mean, oh man. They got rugby, so it's not that far off. Rugby was gnarly. The, the, the sports that for me were the big ones that I love a lot. Honestly, dude, because I can't really do them here very much. I'm trying to. I like track racing with the track chair. It, it's, it's, I don't know. It's, it's like the competition you miss. You miss the camaraderie. It. It just sucks because I like that sport a lot, and now I can't even go play around and do it because it's being put on hold. And I'm one of the guys that I don't have a chair for that yet. That one hit. That one bothered me. For track, basketball, forget it, man. I love basketball. Rugby, rugby's gnarly. Rugby is <laughs> rugby. I love too, but I know that rugby in the para circuit is different versus the, the veteran circuits. You know, do you know that? No, no, no. How is it? How is it different? In the in in the normal community for like the Paralympics and stuff like that, rugby can only be paid played if you're a certain injury level. Oh, okay. So it's a classifications. It's a class, and then most quads play it. So I tell the guys they're using rugby now more for football. Because it looks like they're trying to bring football to the wheelchair world, which is, oh, yes. That's going to be the new rugby for us that can't play rugby pro style. We got football now, they said. That just and sounds like more injuries waiting to happen for some weird reason. Pretty much, but you got a bunch of guys that are willing to do it. So if they're, it, it, you got look at the rugby guys. Their, tank, their chairs look like tanks. Very true. So do you think it would be the same chairs? Would you have paddings and helmet? For football versus rugby, it all depends on positioning. Again, that all comes down, even with the wheelchair basketball circuits, it all comes down to positioning. Your chair will be set up for your position. But I mean, some do, you, guy, do you think you would have helmets and padding? Uh, oh, yeah. Well, I mean, do you think it's more flag football or more? Do you think there's actually going to be contact? Oh, they're going to do. I think it's going to be more rugby oriented. Oh, okay. I to be like I think that rugby is gonna be wheelchair basketball and wheelchair football. Wheelchair ba okay, basketball and football and wheelchair format together. Oh, okay, okay. That makes you know sense. what I mean? Yeah, totally. Because that's the only logical way to get that to be able to come together. Cause the chair it, it <laughs> rugby dude, rugby they hit hard, dude. Dude, I think I if you get your finger there, they're gonna break it. Dude, I, I think I screwed up my back a little bit when I was practicing with you guys. You oh, get, yeah? You get hit hard. Did you feel the, the – and I tell you, you saw everybody in there with the doubt it's not going to be that hard. You know what I love hearing? It's not going to be that hard. You only got your arms. I'm like, okay, all right. And I tell him, I tell the guys, I'm like, you ready for it? We're going to flip his ass over just because he needs a lesson. And then we flip them. I flip them. And I tell them it's not about that. It's about technique practice. I'm the moron who goes and practices by himself. Do you? You're welcome. And then I tell the guys, now we're friends. Let's go. 
Just <laughs> stop being an asshole. <laughs> but that's military. We're like that. It's like brothers and sisters. Yeah. Nobody takes it hard. You know what I mean? So how was it? That's the part. How was it seeing everyone at this last camp? It felt so good, dude. It was, it was, it was like a relief. It was like I was going to go, it was like going to see my family, going to see my brothers and sisters, the grand, the moms and pops that I never had. There, there's more family. It's like being around uncles and aunts and it's, you're with your brother. I loved it. It, it, it's, it, it was, it was chills fun. Then when I, I felt it when I went home, cause you know, you're used to hanging out with him. Now you can't. And then now it gets postponed, canceled. And it gets depressing, dude. It just sucks. That's some, for some of us, that's just, that's the highlight of our year. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I have to say that, uh, I agree with you a hundred percent on that. So now let me ask you this. What is your time frame for this new chair coming out? This chair, I have my welder for this custom chair. He's supposed to come in a week to weld it. And then I'm going to send it for powder. I, I now understand the wheelchair industry enough. I don't want any problems with them. I'm just going to do my own thing. Uh, I know it's going to be hard, but guys, brethren, never quit nothing. You feel depressed, talk to your brother. Even if we can't make it to, to, to the warrior games or we can't do such, reach out, talk to each other, have fun. Go back to what you're saying. I, I brain farted. I apologize for that. It happened on occasion. No, no. I was just asking when you think you were going to get the chair out. Are you, so is this going to okay, be I, a one-off or are you going to try to make a few? This, the funny one is I can replicate this one. Look, this is the funny shit. Any one-off I create, I can replicate again and again because it'll it'll maintain in my database. But every custom chair has a a configuration. So it for me going to be, I remember I went to school for all of this. I went to the fabrication school for two different schools in Rancho Cucamonga. I'm waiting for the third school, which is composites, carbon fiber. Oh wow. I did I did 3D printing, I did reverse engineering, I did engineering. I went to school for all that Baja stuff to do roll cages. To, I learned suspension because I got so tired of the wheelchair world not changing that I learned. I figured somebody's got to have the nuts to go and get it done. My chief told me that. Oh, you keep complaining about all this frame shit and all this crap happening. Why don't you stop crying and fix it? And my chief, I was like, you know what? I love you, chief. I miss hearing shit like that. You said that shit the way I needed to. All right, chief, done. And it just, I just stopped, dude. I just went to school in the wheelchair, learned on the wheelchair, welded on the wheelchair. I tell the guys, come together, have fun. COVID's gonna hit you hard. You're gonna have depression. The the my brothers and sisters on the wheelchair team, I mean on the on the on the on the bleh, Warrior Games team, Navy team. We're here. I plan on making a chair. It's gonna be sick. It's gonna be a Navy chair. Just wait. I've been able to make it. I, I know it sounds cocky and I talk all this crap, but the difference is I can back it up. And the differentiation is when I get in my chair and I come up to your face and you're like, what the fuck is that? <laughs> I'm, I'm there like, I, I say something like, your mom told me that yesterday. And then, I, and then we'll become friends because I usually say some asshole. Like, the guys will tell me all the problems and then I'll go and test them. Complain, I tell guys, with the COVID thing, I tell you, I, guys, look, even recently, I'm telling the guys now, skate park, let's go skate park, everybody's still scared, which is bumming me out because, well, you saw what happened. And then now on top of all of that, this COVID's put a hold even on this, dude. I, I feel bad because when I see the guys depressed, like, I even want to invite them here to come hang out and have a brew and maybe learn something or hang out and see some wealth, get them to have fun and not dwell on that the negativity going on. And then I tell guys, I'm, I'm like, I know it sucks, but you gotta try to figure it out. You yeah. gotta try, at least try, dude. Yeah, no, I try definitely feel you. I mean, some of the best stuff I saw during the pandemic was you doing your inspirational moments on uh, Facebook. 
it's just people asking me. People will hear. This is what happens. One guy would tell me, man, I'm depressed. Or I'm, I, I, I don't know what to do. Life sucks. Blah, blah. And, and they'll tell me a bunch of stuff and I'll feel bad. And then I'll go and do something like that. Up that mountain thing I did with my wife and kids. And I tell the guys, I'm like, it's hard. But if you want it bad enough, you'll figure it out. If you want to be happy bad enough, you will try. Then I tell my friends, I'm like, and I'll call them out. This is where this is where you have to be a friend. You look like you're pushing more on the negative versus trying to figure out the positive. Yeah. So then I try to I try to get their head and their brain and their mindset to pull away from the negative to start figuring out the little things that, that they love and benefit from. But also they can that can contribute to helping others if they can. Because what's the point in doing something? If it doesn't if you're doing it by yourself and that's the only person that's doing it, what's the point? Exactly. exactly. Selfish. Well man, I want to be really respectful of your time. Uh, how do people find you online if they don't find if they don't know you? Look at me up if you guys want. Uh, I'm on Instagram. I know it sounds crazy. Rico, R I C O D A Monster. That's an old screen name. Uh, 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 I'll get more grown up. I've had that one for quite some time now. Okay? You don't have to grow up. You know what I mean? But I have kids, so I want to teach them to be grown. And I can't be a hypocrite to my kid. Don't do that. And then I go and do it. You know what I mean? True. True. For Facebook, it's. Uh, What's the uh, find me on Instagram and it'll connect you to my Facebook. Cool. cool. That's how I usually do it because most of the time I tell you guys like this: I don't get on Instagram and Facebook. I don't really get on TikTok. I don't go to look at stuff. I, I don't do that. I don't mean it in a bad way. I just go out to do stuff for when you guys want to do stuff. Yeah. And if you guys want me to post something, if you guys ask me, that's another thing. When people ask me to post, most of the time that's what I'm posting. So if you guys want me to post more, ask, and I'll just be more motivated to do it because most of the time I'm trying to. Yeah, no, I get what you're saying. So what would you tell anyone who's uh, looking to get into this stuff? I tell guys, find a school. Find a good school that matches you. Uh, and if you can't find a school near you, if you got the GI Bill, figure out. Because when I was in school, there was a guy who came from Texas and for one of the courses training there, he stood in a hotel for three months oh, wow. with his GI Bill. They paid for it. But he was willing to leave his place to come here to learn. That's what you guys got to understand. You guys got to want it bad enough sometimes because yeah. you're going to lose motivation, guys. I've lost motivation many of the times. I, when you don't see me on Instagram, I'm depressed. When you don't see me not talking, it's because I'm trying to figure things out. So I know that every other guy at home, every other girl at home has to be dealing with that shit. Has to be dealing with the same thing. Goal is make it fun. Right now, guys, with all the PTSD and all the, the COVID and all the stuff going on, be there for each other. Have fun with it. Figure it out. That's what I'm trying to not honestly do now. I'm honestly just trying to post crap or things that I find fun that I just do sometimes. Or you'll see me posting stuff about me on my computer, designing the chair. Because somebody will tell me, hey, dude, they'll send me a text. What's up with you, man? I'm, I'm feeling bummed. I'm alone. What are you doing? Put something. And I'll go and I'll post. So that's the way I, I don't. I don't like, uh, I tell guys, don't brag, be humble about it, and you'll make a crap ton of friends. I agree. If a guy's a douche, call him out. If he doesn't like you, he'll still respect you for you calling him out. Yep. You can find me on Facebook and YouTube if you guys, uh, Facebook now. Later, I'm going to start posting a crap ton of videos on this. If you guys want to see it, You'll see what I have in store for the for the for the athletes on the Navy team. I plan on making a chair for the team, and then the goal is to make a chair for each branch. So, all my gunnies, all my chiefs, sarges, start sending me 
ideas as to what your your branch is about to you. And let's get let's start getting it done. Let's start and give me ideas. I'm, I need ideas. When I say ideas, I mean I need to know people's problems in order for them to get fixed. If you don't complain for complain about it, I won't figure it out because that's the only reason I've been doing all this too. All the guys that I go to skate park with tell me all the problems with the chairs. And the guys in the Navy team, everybody always has something. And the guys when I go to San Diego, San Diego to the Chicano Park, because I'll go play basketball with the guys at Chicano Park sometimes. Uh, the guys from the Wolfpack live down there. And they're military, but they're some of the guys that are uh, civilian. So I plan on pushing it hard for you guys, honestly, because for me, dude, I got a wife and kids. That's my motivation. I just want to be a good man doing it. Other than that, if you're a good man, prove it. If you say you can do it, do it. If you talk shit about it, I will call you out. And it will feel so good because I promise you're going to have fun when you know me, when you meet me. You're going to want to hang out. You remember when we were hanging out, dude? It was just a, a fun sesh. Everybody, that's what I, the thing I miss about the, the team, too. You, you get to get away to, to get away from all the hardship and you finally get to get away. And some guys need that, dude. And all my brother out there, please don't do nothing you're not supposed to. Please, please text us, call us. You got my number, dude. Chick? Yeah, dude or chick, I can use both. Both mean the same thing, just for male or female. You know how some people want to get all politically correct? <laughs> oh yeah. And I hate that shit because I try to. Be, I got a daughter and a son. But anyways, guys, I live in an area called uh, in uh, in Riverside. In Riverside, it's a little north of San Diego. It's called Temecula. If you guys want to figure out some stuff to hang out, I'm down to go shoot. I'm down to go hunting. I'm down to go Baja. I have a Jeep Wrangler Rubicon. I call her Ruby. Me and Ruby go and crawl because. That's why I tell guys, figure out what's making you depressed, what's making you sad. And if you really want something and you believe you've earned it and you can get it, go and get it. But do it logically. Don't just go and ruin your credit because you want a Mojave. I tell guys, don't do that. Do it and then ask, because I asked other guys, is the Mojave good? I'd go and ask the gunnies because a lot of the Marines get it. They get the, they get the Mojave because they're always out doing stuff like that. And they're like, yeah, ask for advice. Don't be a stranger. You text me, dude, <laughs> you come out, let's have some fun. Let's have a brew guys. I just, I just hope that everybody can figure this out. Cause when the numbers went up to 30 a day for the suicide, <sighs> that please, let us know, guys. We love you guys, guys. Some of us can deal with it a little better than others. But remember, we're brothers. One team, one fight. We, you can't go to war alone. You won't win. You get your ass handed to you. That's the truth. And thank you so much, brother, for coming on. And I'll be Very out. Well. It looks I'm like sorry if I babbled. No, not at all. I, I'm going to actually be out there sometime in September, October, hopefully. Come, come, come hang out. We can, we can put some grilled food on the smoker. 